Dear Chairman, dear colleagues and guests, first of all, I would like to congratulate all members of World Medical Law Association for your anniversary meeting. And I want to thank my friend, Vice President, World Medical Law Association, Professor Mamedov, for invitation to this successful meeting. It's great honor for me to be here with you. My today's topic is ethical and deontological problems in cardiovascular medicine. I am a cardiovascular surgeon and I do at least two open heart operations every day. But in daily practice, we and as all clinicians face like these uh, situations. So we clinicians uh, under pressure on the one side our medical knowledge based on Hippocrates' oath and another side insurance companies, patients' families and another social issues. And between those antagonist sides create some dilemmas that in this point we have to survive and work between those antagonist sides. And we have to solve these uh, dilemmas. In this point, uh, we need to deontology and medical ethics. What is the deontology and medical ethics? Deontology is based on morals and laws and Deontology is a set of written rules, but medical ethics is different. Medical ethics tries to clarify the dilemmas that occur from the differences in the expectations and values between healthcare givers and patients. And medical ethics cannot be based on universally accepted morals. It is a rational analyzing method that poses open questions and shows way to answers. So medical ethics, the responsibilities of doctors towards patients, society, and our colleagues. What is need for medical ethics? The practice of medicine and ethics are inseparable. Every clinical decision invokes an ethical decision as well. In many instances, the ethical issue may not be readily apparent. In others, Conflicts arise between ethical principles and medical decisions which require the clinician to be well versed with the former in order to guide the latter. And medical ethics and the law are not, with, not the same, but often have defined each other. Breach of ethical obligation may not necessarily mean breach of law, but breach of ethical obligation may be used to prove medical malpractice or medical negligence. And as a uh, practical cardiovascular surgeon, uh, I want to give uh, one of my uh, practical example, a case study. We have a patient who has had a valve prosthesis, but uh, this patient abused drugs early in his life. After two years, uh, his first operation, this same patient readmitted to our clinic with prosthetic valve endocarditis and therefore he, is, he needs second valve prosthesis. In this situation, some doctors, some surgeons might refuse this patient because it is not worth it. The patient will not be able to care for himself, so will not follow the treatment protocols and the patient is under a serious risk of reinfection. It is an irrational use of financial and social resources. And therefore, uh, some doctors uh, might refuse the patients. And what is our recommendation in these dilemmas? Or what is our recommendation? Of course, if the surgical risk is higher than medical treatment, 
refusing surgical option. If there is a medical referral, of course, surgery is recommended. When it comes to irrational use of social resources, it's very uh, discussable uh, problem. A criterion that can be viewed as viable in the social policy field is not possible in the clinical field. A clinician, clinician may not consider the overall evaluation of social needs and the direct influence of certain decisions on these evaluations. If we are to consider such criteria, we open the doors to serious discrimination and biased choices. There is no guarantee that the resources that are protected by refusing these patients will be used for a better cause. And in cardiology and cardiac surgery, ethical, ethical problems is continuing and increasing. Because our practical daily guidelines every day update and change. But how can we solve these ethical dilemmas and problems? We have fundamental principles that these fundamental principles can help to us for solving these problems. There are four main funda fundamental principles. First of is autonomy, so respect for autonomy and consent. Second is non-maleficence, not being a curse for harm. Third is beneficence, we have to be useful, and justice is principle of fairness. What is the autonomy or independence? We respect for an individual's autonomy or ability to make decision for patients. So it includes respect for their privacy and confidentiality. We need to provide sufficient information for them to make informed choices. We have to tell truth and we protect persons with diminished or impaired autonomy. Beneficence is a very important uh, principle. This refers to the tradition of acting always in patients' best interest to maximize benefits and minimize harm. non malfeasance this principle ensures that treatment or research should not produce harm. And this so negligence, misconduct, malpractice, all are the non malfeasance and uh, I believe that very, very important principle for our daily practice. Justice, this refers to the need all people equally and fairly. Society uses a variety of factors as a criteria for distributive justice, including the following. To each person an equal share, to each person according to need, effort, contribution, merit, and free market exchange. We should strive to provide some decent minimum level of healthcare for a all citizens, regardless of ability to pay. And uh, I want to summarize the uh, principle of medical ethics, the good of the patient is paramount. Trust must be nurtured before all else. Avoid conflicts of interest. We have to avoid perception of conflict of interest. Respect rights of patients. Safeguard confidentiality. Respect self-determination. Communicate honestly with all and maintain competence. And we need reevaluate our professionalism. And in this point, doctors and professional organizations and professional societies might play an important role in solving new ethical problems. And clinicians must inform patients whether a procedure is covered by their insurance or not. If there is any case of exception, the doctors should defend the patients and must know how to apply certain pressure on the insurance to cover that certain procedure. On the other hand, doctors should not be on patient's side if the procedures are not that necessary. In any case, they must, they must explain to the patients that 
those procedures are not that required. And another uh, discussable moment is terminal stage of life and administration of medical and surgical cardiac procedure at a terminal stage of life. Cardiologists face the necessity of to apply complicated and very expensive procedure at this stage, so terminal stage of life. The ethical problems regarding this specific patient group and are more prominent and needs to special approaches to this special group of patients. And in this uh, stage, we need special guidelines for special care, special guidelines for resuscitation, comfortable health, unnecessary health, and we need a special guide to physician-assisted euthanasia. These terms are intended to describe special ethical issues and shows that patients, physicians, and families are helpless against the modern era. And let me want to describe our conclusions. Physicians, especially the treating cardiovascular disease, have to provide high-quality assistance. Palliative care carries the purpose of reducing the suffering and pain of cardiologic patients at a terminal stage. Palliative care is very valuable for patients and must find its place in the process of financial distribution in healthcare services. Medical schools should introduce disciplines on palliative care into their education programs. We support the idea of holding scientific research on services provided at terminal stages. A physician should perform palliative care without any financial interest. Treatment methods that have little benefits or small probability of producing the intended effects should be replaced with palliative measures. This should be implemented regardless of pressure on continuing this treatment. Patients have the right of refusing treatment methods supporting life. This decision is based on the principle of patient freedom and correspondence to the law doctrine on official consent. Physicians engaged in the treatment of cardiovascular diseases should cooperate with the patients and their families in these measures. We support palliative care and the right of patients to refuse treatment, but we don't support the strategy of physician-assisted euthanasia. Thank you very much for your attention. And I believe that all clinicians, as me, we have to work under the lights of main principle of medical ethics. And therefore, I want to repeat our four main principles. This is justice, beneficence, maleficence, and uh, I believe that very important uh, principle is maleficence. I have to work minimum harmful with our patients. And I wish to best luck to all of us in serving to humanity. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very nice presentation.